Welcome to the channel. Do you want to learn Marvel Snap secrets, gain more cubes, and hit infinite? Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Well, if you're still here, you're in the right place. I explain my strategy so we can learn together, and if you spot a mistake, let me know. If you have questions, let me know. So we're taking Phoenix Force back into High Infinite. The big house. I have my multiple man in Phoenix Force. Can I get a destroy card, please? I guess not. I don't want peace. I want problems, always. Alrighty. We are starting at 5,314. And first up, we are up against Upscale Locksmith. Okay, starting hand. We have multiple man. They get our Shuri. We get their Hulk. Is it high evo? It is not high evo. It is just a plain old Hulk. We have our multiple man and Venom line. We need Phoenix Force, of course. What kind of deck is this? A regular Hulk and a Maria Hill? We have our Phoenix Force. So, I want to avoid Quantum Realm, obviously because it sets everything's power to two and I don't need to drop my power. We have, I'm so confused by this deck, uh, but the reason we snapped is because we have our winning line in hand and if a deck cannot win when you have your winning line, it probably isn't great. So in hindsight, it would be fantastic to play, right? Which is why I say Playing right isn't necessarily a bad thing. There's a lot of benefits to it. So they can actually play down their Hulk. So that's fantastic for them. Because they will have six energy. Play down Phoenix Force here just in case. But it probably doesn't matter. They may also have... Devil Dino. Why would you double Devil Dino? That's not a great play because Shuri only doubles your base power. And now they open themselves up to an Enchantress play. Can I draw one of my tech cards, please? <laughs> no, I guess I cannot. So I will move multiple men here. Do I drag it back? I could drag the multiple man back right and try to get the bonus energy. I could hold with Ghost Spider. I could hold Ghost Spider for last turn, play Dagger and Ghost Spider. So I'm just not sure what I want to do. I think I don't want priority as well. So I'm just going to hold. One, two, and I still draw. I'm just going to hold and let them get down what they want to, that way I still duck priority, which is what I want to do. So if I can draw into Sean or Enchantress, that would be fantastic. No, God, please, no, 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 no! <laughs> All right, let's try to pull this out anyway. Do I go all in? Okay. So I abandon right. I play... I'm going to play dagger mid and yank, yank it left. So that's plus 14, so 28. And then... They will need to be 16 middle because I'm going to drag both multiple men middle. And then I do have three extra energy. Like and subscribe. So let's use that too. So drag both multiple men mid. Play Nico mid. Carnage right. You're out of order! You're out of order! No. I need to play Nico mid, 
Carnage right first. That way my multiple man doesn't get destroyed. Move both multiple men. Play dagger mid. Go spider left. Whew. I think we got there. And so they will probably play hard for left, which is what they do. And this looks like a very easy win. Knowledge is Anything get buffed left? No. So you see, we that's why we play, had to play Carnage first, because now the multiple man is going to get pulled back and not destroyed by Carnage. We do this for tie-breaking purposes, just in case. So now this multiple man will pop back. And now, of course, we play the dagger. She gets plus two from Quantum Realm. We yank her left. We get the plus 12. And a nice, solid win. Victory. So you see, we played very patiently. And I didn't rush my turns. We skipped turn five completely. Which is kind of an absurd thing to do. But you see the reason why we did is because I was able to recognize that this is a deck that typically likes to play a lot of cards. Quantum Realm dissuades people from playing there. So we know they're going to load up left and right in all likelihood. So then I want to be able to pull my dagger with Ghost Spider. I know I can win middle with the two multiple men sliding there. And then it's just being able to play the proper order and get as much power onto the board as possible, again, for a tiebreaker. If they had some, some card that I can't think of right now that for some reason was able to get a bunch of power left or mid, another Devil Dino, something like that, or if they had saved their Devil Dino, which they should have, and played mid, then, and tied mid, well, I need to be able to win the tiebreaker. And they beat me by 13 here. I'm up 15 on the left. So if they tied middle, we would have won tiebreaker by two points. So keep that in mind. It's always good to practice those good fundamentals, even when it's unlikely to matter. That way, when it does matter, you're just prepared. It's natural. And you can keep it moving. Get a win. Alrighty, next up we have my eyes. X Mansion first location. That is just a big gamble. I've had cards get destroyed there because it spawns a destroy card. Funny enough, I've had Phoenix Force spawn there. I'm sure a lot of people have seen the Ultron spawn there. Uh, I have my I have a winning line in hand. I have my two tech cards. So I'm going to snap. I'm in strong position. I will play dagger mid. We'll avoid X-Mansion. Just because of that uncertainty. And I have my line in hand. They're going to gain priority. They might have armor in the Sunspot deck if it's high evo. But we will continue down this line. Because it is the only line we have. Interesting. A discard type of deck with sunspots. Power the duck, okay. We have Carnage next, no problem. Now, you might be tempted because Nico has her move spell to play Nico first, and then on the next turn, play Phoenix Forest, then you can go Spider back. But that's just kind of a waste of energy. So I would I would just want to play down the Phoenix Forest. I will play it left because they are more likely to play middle and right. And I want to buff up the, uh, the Phoenix Forest uh, dagger. Janto, that's fine because we have Sean. So they have 10 power, ignoring that. Now it's where do I want to play? They don't have. They don't have. Uh, 
I forget what I was going to say. Oh, ongoing cards. Because I think I'm just going to play out Enchantress for stats. So I'd like them to have priority. My next card is Multiple Man. That does nothing. So I'm going to Drag Dagger right, buff her up a lot. Play Nico. She gives plus two to my next card. And just play out the Enchantress for stats. And then, of course, I'm going to Sean right they have they don't have priority do they have priority they do have priority interesting they're spreading out that power they have priority though so that's fine so i think i Did they discard? No, they brought back their one discard. So this is just going to be a big card. So because it's a big card, they're losing mid. It's not a lot by a lot, but they are losing mid. So I'm going to drag Dagger left to contest this. We're going to make them have to play for every lane. And then, of course, I'm playing Sean Wright. And then it is where to play multiple man. Because Sean Wright is 10, 12 points. So 12 beats this 10 they have left. And just in case they float one, we'll just play multiple man middle. So we're making them play for all lanes. This is going to be a very slim margin of victory or defeat. Interesting, they just loaded up mid. Okay. Boy, they did have an armor in their deck. So, lucky for us, they did not play armor right. So they probably figured we were going hard mid because we were already up there and we could move our dagger. But it's, it is being as unpredictable as possible. So that is what I hope I walked you through during turn six before I locked in my play. It was being unpredictable. Nobody expects Shang-Chi in this deck. So hitting one of their two targets wins. And honestly, I could have Shawned left and moved Dagger mid. That would have won also. So, but it's doing the unexpected thing. They were up by quite a bit left. So moving the Dagger left, they might think it's more safe. Again, they had to commit power middle to even win. And we did bump that up a little bit with the extra multiple man. And then we always had Sean Wright, which we planned for starting on turn five, I think it was. So being able to think a couple of turns ahead is very good as well, because you can see how we plotted out this victory well before turn six. Okay, we have Doc Ock of Spider-Man fame. Fasten your seatbelts. The big house. I have my multiple man in Phoenix Force. Can I get a destroy card, please? I guess not. <laughs> so there's an argument to be made that I should play down the multiple man, and I should, because for the last turn, I can Ghost Spider and Dagger. So I want to save my Ghost Spider for that. That's, again, 14 points for three uh, cost, which you really can't beat. I might draw into a Destroy card. We will see. Boy, I think I want to snap with Muir Island and Brood. Yeah, I'm going to snap. I like... Perfect. And this is why you snap. So, I got my multiple man down. Maybe they thought I had the combo. And, of course, District X just hosed them completely. But even ignoring that, Brood into Muir Island. I have Dagger and Ghost Spider for the last turn, which, again, is a 314. That's... 
better than it ever gets, 314 on the last turn. I have Martyr, which I could play in the Muir Island as well, because the more power she is, the less likely she is to move. So then I could focus on the other two lanes, and then we just see what else we draw into. But we were pretty well positioned, and once you are well positioned, you should snap and get your free cube if they're scared, or get bonus cubes if they stay in when they shouldn't. Okay, we have Star Move Enthusiast. They move stars. We have an okay starting hand, of course. We have our kind of support cards in Shuri and Phoenix Force. We have one destroy card, which is enough. But nothing to destroy. So this might end up being a Nimrod play. We might be playing a Loki deck. It's good to recognize your opponent's deck as early as possible. This is definitely a Nimrod play. We do have the Nico Destroy. So I guess we just play that out. I don't think it is worth a draw. No, it's not worth a, any type of draw since I have so many cards. I almost forgot to snap. I see my winning line. If it, this is a Loki deck, if I have assessed my opponent correctly, Loki has a horrible matchup into Phoenix Force. So this is just good all around and it is a Loki deck. And they can take my cards, I don't care, because I have everything I need in hand. And now it's just where do I play the Nimrod? I think I... It actually doesn't matter because I have Ghost Spider. So it's probably best that I play off of Xandar. Because I think I want to Ghost Spider the Nimrod to Xandar, where I Venom. And then I will carnage a lane that I don't mind losing. And we will assess what lane that is. Because if they have Shang-Chi and they shawn my Venom lane, well, they've also given me an extra Nimrod now. So by playing, they took multiple mana, that is fine. So they actually thinned my deck, which is fantastic. So they don't have my Sean, but they could have a Sean from Agent Coulson. When you are playing Shuri, do you see how I'm hovering it over the lane? There's no VFX. This lane, you can see that grid underneath Nimrod. So that's another thing you should get in the habit of. Make sure you see the grid, because if a location switches, like I think it's Starlight Citadel, uh, Shuri is active at that location, not at the spot. So if the location moves, you need to play your card where that lo new location is. So we will play Nimrod. Right, there is an argument to be made. They have Devil Dinosaur that I could Carnage and then Sean this lane, but that probably isn't enough power. We will give up the Devil Dinosaur lane so I will Ghost Spider here, I will Venom here, and I will Carnage right. That gets rid of the, or that throws the right location. They have priority, so if they Sean here, that's fine. I was planning to have Nimrod left anyway, so we should just be covered. Hmm, they play hard for mid. Can they get to 24 mid? They cannot. So, a uh, easy win with double destroy. I, If I have Ghost Spider in hand, I almost always like to play her to move my Nimrod. That way, if they try any type of disruption, a Cosmo, or Armor, a Malaya, that they cannot disrupt me. Because or they disrupt this lane, but that typically won't matter uh, if you move the Nimrod. Now in this case, I think it would have mattered. I would have lost if they had disrupted this location. I would have should have thrown the middle. But also, a Loki deck, it's less likely 
they have Cosmo, even though some builds will run a Cosmo. So it's just playing the odds uh, on this. And I figured the odds were safe enough. And I lock in more power left if there's a tiebreaker middle or, or something odd like that. Okay, next up we have Poof J. We have our multiple man in hand. We have our two tech cards. We have Ghost Spider. Not bad. Okay, a tiny card deck with a top end of Red Hulk. We will play multiple man middle. I want priority to be able to destroy him with Venom. I'm not snapping because I don't have Phoenix Force in hand. I am snapping because I have Phoenix Force in hand. And this should just be a very straightforward, easy play. I have priority. I will in all likelihood play Phoenix Force in the Kiln. I should be able to maintain priority. Yes. And so we just play Phoenix Force here. Okay, that should win right. They might have uh, the new card that just came out. Or some mover that can get in there. Armor. Okay. So hopefully they're nice and they play their six cost card middle. I will play multiple man here, move multiple man middle, because I want to play Ghost Spider left. Ghost Spider gets the bonus from like Hellas. And then I will play Shuri mid. So I have options. I will be able to, I have three multiple men when the turn ends. I could play Nimrod mid. I could play Sean, depending on how everything shakes out. Oh, in hindsight, I could have actually played Enchantress left. Maybe that was the play. Yeah, I locked it in. That was probably the play since I have both. Because if this is a big card, I could have just shawned this card. It is not, okay. Oh, that is so juicy. That is so juicy. Okay, so this is as uh, easy. <laughs> Victory. Now, they probably got afraid that I had all of these multiple men and they couldn't get that much power. But boy, this exposed Red Hulk, just playing Sean Middle would have just cleaned that up. I would have gotten to plus 16 over here, so 28 power here. So they would have had to play 13 points of power. With Angela gets two, so 11 points of power. And then they're definitely losing Kiln. So that was just a tall task, even without the Sean, just to win left. But also even, yeah, and, and to win mid, because I could have dragged a multiple man mid or played Nimrod mid, which is what I probably would have done. So we just had this all sewed up. Okay, we have Summer Moon with the Galactus Avatar. We have our multiple man, we have our destroy card, we have Nimrod. Sokovia takes our Nico. We don't have to worry about Red Guardian, thankfully. So we will just play now multiple man. Okay, we have priority. Oh, Rickety Bridge is fantastic too. I will play Death Lockdown. I 
I'm holding off on snapping because I don't have Phoenix Force or Shuri. But maybe I should snap now. Because even with Magneto, the gift of Magneto, I could drag some of their cards to Rickety Bridge as well. I also could play into Rickety Bridge now and then just play down the Nimrod. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to play the... I'm going to play the Carnage down. I want to keep the Ghost Spider for a last turn, potentially. Whew. They avoided Rickety Bridge. Uh, but they do have priority. So they might be able to stop my Nimrod. And then we are in trouble. Nocturne got us in trouble, yes. Interesting. And Loki, they took six of my cards. Hmm. I think a Loki deck might get us. It kind of depends on... And they can play a lot. They've got six of our cards. Yeah, I don't like how we drew this game. So a Loki deck did kind of get us uh, with the Nocturne Surprise. And I don't, I don't like my options here, especially with Great Web. They took away our, our strong location that was going to help us. So I'm leaving this game in because this shows that I snapped because I thought I was in an advantageous position. You should almost always do retreat later. I snapped because I was in an advantageous position, but the advantage kind of turned. I was playing into a good matchup. A Loki matchup is good for my deck. And it just didn't pan out. So, no problem. As long as I play like that consistently, you also saw earlier how when I snapped early, I got a retreat. So, snapping aggressively will pay off. You will lose two cubes from time to time, but also you will gain more in the long run. So, I, I highly encourage you to do that. Okay, so that's where I'm calling this video. We gained, we started below 500, we gained to 4,500, so maybe around 500 ranks. This deck is still a strong and good performer. Uh, you one, one key note, and if you stayed this long, good on you. Uh, you. When you play this deck, you will have streaks of horrible games. So when I first started recording, <laughs> peek behind the scenes, I went on a six game losing streak, losing slash re retreat streak. I had horrible draw luck. I had bad location luck. The opponent had great draw luck. Nothing was working. So with Phoenix Force deck, you will have horrible streaks like that. But you can clearly see with this video that you can power, once you power through the streak, you'll hit a streak where it's just fantastic. So I've maybe only been recording for an hour or so. Uh, this is a deck that is fantastic to use still. I actually didn't use it to climb this season, but to climb the infinite this season, but I have heard from people that have done that to uh, great success. And this continues to be a strong performer in any meta. So I encourage you to give it a spin. And there are some weird interactions, so ask away any questions you may have. I'm, I'm here to help. So until next time, take care.